Hi, I'm Jenny Williams. I'm the pastor of Avery United Methodist Church in Morgantown, West Virginia, and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We're getting close to Christmas. Uh, we have focused on a word each week during the season of Advent. So we've looked at hope, peace, joy, and today we're gonna look at love. Today in the chat, let us know something about where or how you're worshiping. You can say something like, I'm in my recliner, or I've got on my fuzzy slippers, or I've got a nice cup of coffee. If you're not worshiping in Morgantown, we invite you to let us know where you are worshiping, and uh, it would be fun for us to know exactly who's with us. While you're doing that, um, I wanna tell you about our two Christmas Eve worship services, and would love for you to be a part of those. One is in person, outside, we're gonna have a drive in worship service at 7 p.m. Uh, on in our church parking lot and you'll tune your radio to 99.9 .9 and be able to see me I'll be outside under our awning and you'll be able to hear the whole service and we're gonna sing and read the scripture uh, Christmas story and it will be wonderful um, the other is online so on the morning of December 24th there will be a service available for you to worship along with at any time. It'll be a candlelight service with our musicians and uh, with me and uh, the lighting of the Advent candle. So that's something that you can worship with any time. And we thought also you might like to use that if you're not with your family this season or your loved ones and you'd like to worship together, you can get on a Zoom call and then you can share your screen with that worship service, which will be on both our YouTube channel and our Facebook page and uh, you can share your screen with others and then you can be worshiping together uh, on Christmas Eve if you'd like to do that or you can save it till Christmas Day. So we hope uh, either of those will be helpful for you and worshipful as we focus on the Christ child. To enter into worship today, I'd love to invite you to close your eyes or you can keep them open, take a couple deep breaths, just get comfortable where you are and we'll listen and reflect and prepare ourselves for worship as Manuel plays for us.
Jesus is the demonstration of God's love, and at Advent, we light candles to remind ourselves of the light of hope, promise of peace, joy of salvation, and overwhelming love he has brought to us. What is love? Love is when you care more about others than yourself. It's sacrifice. The Bible tells us that God is love. These candles represent hope, peace, joy, and love. When Jesus came, he showed us how much God loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This hymn was written by Don Gardner, who's a native of West Virginia and lives in Bridgeport. He served as the director of music ministry for one of the Methodist churches there for a very long time. And actually, uh, our beloved Butch worked closely with him for years. He's also a Wesleyan alum, and he wrote this hymn for the Advent season. And I thought, more than just sing it, since it will be new to most of you, I should let you know that it was written by one of our own right down the road. This is Lord of Light, illumine thou our lives. All during Advent this year, we've been working with the theme, Keep Watch, Take Heart. And this is the second Sunday in the second portion of that, uh, Take Heart. Today we'll be talking about love, a giving love. So I wanna start out with a reading from scripture from the Gospel of Luke, chapter one, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. 
for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Since the third century, there's been a title for Mary, the mother of Jesus, and that title is Theodicus. And in the Eastern Church, that's a title that's used for Mary a lot. It means God-bearer. Mary bore God to the world, like in her body. She let her body be used in order to bear God to the world. It's a a pretty fleshy part of the Christmas story. And of course, there's another very important body in the Christmas story, the body of Jesus, where God came in a person, in the flesh, love embodied, incarnate, love in a person. Both Mary and Jesus let their bodies be used in a self-giving, sacrificial way. And in Jesus' case, of course, that was from birth all the way through death. They offered their bodies in love. They gave of themselves, like their whole selves, their physical selves, and gave in love for the love of the world. I think one of the things that's really hard in this time that we've been going through um, in this pandemic is that the world is virtual for the most part. For those of us who aren't uh, frontline workers or essential workers, life doesn't seem embodied. Um, I don't know how it goes in your house, but my life is a lot about screens. Uh, Screens are how we keep in touch with the people that we love. Screens are how we do work. Um, Screens are how school is done in my house. So we've got, you know, Zoom and webinars that we attend and um, virtual conversation and virtual concerts and FaceTime, there's all these ways that we use screens and it seems like it's not very embodied. We can't be with the flesh, with one another in the flesh. We can't touch each other. We can't hug each other. And so we're, we're lacking that embodiment in our lives. Now, some people will say that scripture you know, doesn't really apply to life. And I would challenge that, especially with today's scripture that I read, because with Mary and Jesus, who used their bodies for God's work, so can we use our bodies right now for God's work. This morning, it's Thursday as I record this, and this morning I sent out a prayer request email to our congregation. Um, I sent out emails in the last 24 hours that exceed the number of emails that I've sent out over the last nine months that were related to COVID. So in the last 24 hours, I've sent out more emails requesting prayer for people with COVID than I have in the entire first nine months of the pandemic. It's bad out there. Right, it's close to us now. In West Virginia, it hasn't seemed very close to a lot of people, but it's close to us now. 
And so I talked with the congregation in that email about doing all the things that we ought to be doing right now. Not going anywhere unless it's absolutely necessary. And that when we do go somewhere to make sure that we're wearing a mask up over our noses that fits well, um, that we're keeping our distance, that we're washing our hands after we touch surfaces that other people have touched, that we're just extra careful in all sorts of ways. And I talked to the congregation in that email about why we do that. We do that because we love other people. Sure, none of us want to get COVID, but we, we know um, that wearing a mask is actually more preventative for someone else getting COVID from us than protecting us from someone else. We mask up, we keep distance, we wash our hands, we do all of these things because we love other people. We do it out of care for our neighbors and our loved ones and our community. I mean, that's the hallmark of Christians, right? Is that we're a people who serve and a people who love And this is one way that we can serve and love people with our bodies. The way that we cover our bodies or even the way that we don't put our bodies in certain places. These things are sacrificial acts of love. Now, when you think about it, the act of putting on a mask, um, for those who are medically able, um, that's that's not too much of a sacrifice. It's really kind of more annoying than anything else, right? My glasses fog up a lot of the time when I have a mask on and just kind of irritating. And depending on the mask you wear, you can't breathe super well. Masks are pretty much annoying. What's hard for us, what's hard for us is staying away from other people. And not just the six feet, but for example, with another holiday coming up. That's a real sacrifice for us. A sacrifice of not being around other people. That's something that we give up in our lives. And for, for years, for all of my ministry and so many other pastors do this too, we've preached about following Christ and the cost of discipleship and the sacrifices that we make in our lives. And guess what? A lot of the times, we don't get to pick and choose what those sacrifices are. The situation presents them to us. And so now we're in a position of being able to follow Christ, to care for our neighbor, and to make sacrifices to do that. Sacrifices in the way that we alter our daily lives and sacrifice in the ways that we alter our holiday celebrations. The Apostle Paul says, present your bodies as a holy and living sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And that's in Romans chapter 12, verse one. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Folks, that's what we're doing right now. We are presenting our bodies covered or removed as a sacrifice for the common good. And Paul says, that's your worship. That's how you worship God. Paul would say what we're doing right here, this is good, right? But there's also this thing that we do with our bodies and that is worship of God when done with intent of love of neighbor. So like you, I'm sad and frustrated and disappointed about what my Christmas celebrations are going to look like and not going to look like. But what if, what if when we approached those times that we thought of them as an offering to God? What if in those moments that we're feeling sad, I mean, I've shed tears over this. What if in those moments we think, This is the way that I follow Christ. This is how I offer myself to Christ as a gift to our neighbors and our community and the world. This Christmas, our restraint will be our offering. Christmas isn't gonna be normal, but when we are frustrated, this is what we can remember. 
that we are offering ourselves and even this holiday to God. Now, admittedly, it's going to cost some people more than other people, people who would normally get to see grandkids who have grown or grandparents who are there telling stories of the family, um, people who would get to celebrate new marriages or other milestones in families' lives, um, getting to spend time with an aging parent or grandparent. That's painful that we have to sacrifice those things. But when we don't go, when we stay distant, we remember that this is how we offer our bodies to God. Now, I think there's a way that we can sanctify these offerings, and that's with prayer. When we're in those situations where we're frustrated, where we're contemplating changes, we can stop and pray and say, God, this is how I'm offering myself to you. A way we never thought we would have to offer ourselves. We can dedicate these days, we can dedicate this Christmas to Christ. In that way, we'll truly be focused on Jesus by following Jesus even in the way that we celebrate together. Now, I want to say another thing about bodies and a giving love. And it's something that we do in our congregation. We've done for years, and I wanted to invite you to be a part of that. Our congregation, like a lot of other churches, has something called an emergency fund. And when people call churches and they have a need, uh, we're able to assist them because of the generosity of our congregation and our congregation's friends. Um, we get to assist in lot of, lots of different ways. Um, in the cold weather, we're, of course, mindful of heating situations, and we help people with past due bills. Um, all the basic utilities, we've helped people and with food, and we connect them to resources when they call that can help beyond what we can do. But because we're not um, receiving government funds, we don't have some of the same restrictions and regulations as those entities do. And so we can help in other ways um, that folks might not normally be able to get assistance from other organizations. And those are really some of the, the work that I feel the best about. Um, so we'll share stories of those with you. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But I wanted to invite you to give generously to our emergency fund. And the way that you can do that is you can go to our website, which is averyumcwv.org, and click on the Donate tab. And there's instructions there about how to give either by check, to mail it to the church, or to use either of our electronic platforms. Uh, if you set up Givelify, that's very easy. There's a way to designate. If you use PayPal, there are some instructions on that Donate tab. You have to send us a message to let us know um, that you want your gift to go for the emergency fund. Anything that's donated for the emergency fund is 100% directed to people in need. So we feel good about that too. Uh, finally, any electronic gifts that are given between December 23rd and December 25th will all go to the emergency fund. We feel like it's really important when we gather at Christmas um, not to keep any of that money, though we could use it to sustain the church, but to give it away because that's what Jesus calls us to do is to give away what we have. So we wanna invite you into that work. Um, one of the things that we have coming up for you that will be available on December 23rd is a program of all sorts of music that's gonna be done uh, by people in our congregation and uh, people in uh, the musical circles around this congregation. Uh, that'll be available on the morning of the 23rd and we invite you to just play that uh, while you're preparing a meal or uh, while you're wrapping gifts, you can uh, run it through your TV. It's on YouTube and Facebook and have it on in the background, sort of like the equivalent of that fake fireplace that you can run for um, aesthetic effect. Um, or you can put it, uh, connect with a Bluetooth speaker and have it going on in the background. It'll be lots of music, sacred and secular. But we'll also be throughout that program sharing stories with you of different ways that we have helped people with the emergency fund. So we would love it if you would join us uh, for that and you would help us to help those in our community and beyond. 
We're about to have a song, Love Came Down at Christmas, and offer it to you as a time for you to reflect on your own ways to offer to God. Uh, if you want to make an offering to the emergency fund, you can do that during this time. Um, but we just want it as a time for you to reflect on the love that came down in the person of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Most high God, for you, nothing is impossible. Through a poor young woman in a small town, you gave birth to your realm of endless glory. By your Holy Spirit, fill us with new life and hope and overshadow us with your power and grace so that we, like Mary, might be your servants bearing witness to the promise of your word through Jesus Christ, who is coming to reign and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I think you're really gonna enjoy our next piece of music. We love it when Ty uh, comes and plays with us in worship and I, I do think you'll enjoy it. Following his song, we'll have our closing hymn. <laughs>
If you are a Spotify user, we've got this collaborative playlist, Advent at Avery, and we've been inviting folks to add songs along the theme for each week. So if you'd like to add a song, any song, doesn't matter, to reinforce or speak into this idea of a giving love, please look up that playlist and add it. We would love it. There's so many songs on there, lots of different genres, and we would love to have yours included. And now as you go forth into the world, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve God. Amen.